Shalom. Let's talk about the concepts of the land of Israel as we find it in the Torah and as we find it in the world today. And really, let's talk about the centrality of Eretz Israel, the, the land of Israel and what it means for the Jewish people and really what it means for the whole world. You know, the land of Israel is in the news all the time. And it would seem to be so disproportionate, the attention that the land of Israel, the state of Israel, receives. You know, coming from America, for example, you know that there are, I think, 243 states of Israel that would fit into the state of Texas alone. And yet, when you read in the news and when you hear in the news about things going on in Israel, you know, you'd be surprised. You talk to people and they think that Israel must be such a huge place. They think it must be just absolutely take up so much space on the globe because it receives so much attention. Now, why is that? And we know the Torah teaches us it's because the land of Israel is the secret to the survival of the entire human race. The land of Israel is the source of all physical and spiritual blessings in this world. And the divine providence which governs over the land of Israel is totally unique and totally singular. But one day, the prophets tell us, that when the world is clarified and rectified and humanity works together and prophecy returns to the world, so then the entire world will also be on this level of recognition. But in the meantime, the idea is, whenever we read about the land of Israel in the Bible, we are reading about the source of blessing. The word Jerusalem appears in the Torah over 700 times. And everywhere, Jerusalem is synonymous with everything that's good and right in the world with the very presence of God itself. And, and so our sages teach us that there are levels of ascending sanctity in the world, that the land of Israel is sanctified over all the other lands, and that Jerusalem itself has even, an even higher level of sanctity. It's like a microcosm of all the goodness of the land of Israel because it's the place of the divine presence. So we read here in the book of Deuteronomy something very astounding in chapter 11, we read about Eretz Israel, for the land to which you come to possess it. It is not like the land of Egypt that you left, where you would plant your seed and water it on foot like a vegetable garden. But the land to which you cross over to possess it is a land of mountains and valleys. From the rain of heaven it drinks water, a land that Hashem your God seeks out. The eyes of Hashem your God are always upon it from the beginning of the year to year's end. And these verses actually allude to an entirely different system of divine providence that governs over the land of Israel. Indeed, the sages in the Talmud tells us that rain only falls really in the merit of the land of Israel, that the land of Israel receives the water, and the rest of the world kind of gets like the, the spillover from that, the balance from that, in the merit of the rain in the land of Israel. But what does this really mean? There's a, there's a very unusual verse here, and, and these verses really, they're very deep because they talk about the, the, um, the whole concept of the difference in the way that God governs over the affairs of the land of Israel than the way he governs over the rest of the world. But we have this verse that the eyes of Hashem, your God, are always upon it from the beginning of the year to year's end. So, you know, people can look at this and they can be somewhat offended. You know, I live, let's say, in uh, New Jersey. I live in Tibet. Is God not looking here? Does, not, does God not care about the entire world? Is he not looking everywhere at once? Uh, obviously, we know that the answer is yes. Of course, we know that God has a very intimate and vibrant relationship with every creature. Of course, do the creatures know that? Do they find their way to him? That's another question altogether. But the idea is... There's something that's being emphasized to us here that we have to try to understand, that the eyes of God are upon the land of Israel from the beginning of the year to the year's end. I heard it explained once in a very beautiful way. And since that time, it's the only way that I personally can understand this verse. It's like you ask someone, do you, do you love Coca-Cola? And the person will say, yes. That, by the way, just shows us something about the way we use our words, you know, love. <laughs> but anyway, someone says, yeah, I love Coca-Cola. But then you say, do you love your children? And they'll say, of course I love my children. 
So we say, well, I hope that the way that you look at a bottle of Coca-Cola is not the same way that you look at your children. I hope. I mean, you never know. But the fact is, you don't usually find a person uh, who takes a bottle of Coca-Cola, you know, and fondles it and hugs it and kisses it. I hope not, but you never know. Again, but what am I trying to say? I love the Coca-Cola. I love the children. Excuse me. It's not the same looking. It's not the same looking. That's what Hashem is telling us. He's looking at the whole world, but He's looking at the land of Israel differently. And all of us are so connected to this. The Jewish people, of course, have to understand that all of the commandments that were given in the Torah are for doing in the land of Israel. And God makes it so clear, and we don't need a commentary to tell us. We read God tells us, so that when you will come into the land. And the, the situation, the connection of the Jew in the land of Israel is different than an American in America or a Frenchman in France. It's about being plugged into a socket. It's about this soul-level electricity. And it's much more than that. Because it's not just what the personal benefit is for the Jew. It's what the world benefits. You know, there's a word, Zion. We talk about Zionism all the time. Zion. What is Zion? It's the same word when a child brings home a report card from school and he has a mark it's called a tzion, because it's a, it's, it comes from the word excellence. When the Jewish people are living in the land of Israel according to the Torah of Israel, that brings about a state of excellence for the entire world. And this is a very, very important world principle on a universal level for us to understand what our mission is in, in life. But moving from the, from the um, ethnocentric idea of Israel in her land to the whole world. What is the role of the nations relating to the land of Israel? And there are so many prophecies that tell us that God is going to once again manifest himself throughout the, the, in the continuing saga of human history through Jerusalem, that God chooses Jerusalem, that he never changed his mind about this preeminence. And he tells us for Zion's sake, Isaiah says, I shall not be silent. You know, today there is a campaign in the world to utterly besmirch everything that the land of Israel and Jerusalem stand for and to somehow disconnect the Jewish people from the land of Israel. This is like the new anti-Semitism. You know, we're not against the Jewish people. It's just that this whole thing about, about Israel, you know, about it being yours and all of this kind of idea. And it's a very subtle type of subterfuge it's a very, it's a very, at the same time, a very um, a confrontational um, revelation of an of a type of alternative reality that's being created, and it's coming up against this plan of God's to use the land of Israel and to use Jerusalem to bring about this radiance and this fulfillment and this peace and harmony for all people, and so I think that one of the major goals that those non-Jews who want to attach themselves to the God of Israel and who feel this motivation to be part of, of the program, as it were, of, of God's plan for humanity, I think one of the major goals that they should have is to stand up and be counted and speak and not be silent and try and, and counter the terrible wave of anti-Israel and anti-Jerusalem sentiment that's being expressed non-stop by the press, by people in the world, because this is really, I think, the acid test of who a person is in this generation. And we read in the prophets about how everyone ultimately has to make a choice of standing up. Everything in life, this is the fundamental principle of the entire Torah for Jew and Gentile, everything is about free choice. It's about choosing between right and wrong. And one of the clearest manifestations that we see this today is in the world arena regarding everything, that, all the lies and all the falsehoods that are being expressed about Israel. And how ironic that because Israel really is the key to the survival of humanity and all the goodness and all the blessing pour into the world through the vehicle of the land of Israel, and in our generation, we have to talk more about this, but in our generation, the vehicle, the vessel that God has given us to begin getting this process back on track is the state of Israel. And the state of Israel is a vessel that God gave us in order to be able to bring about 
this state of blessing for the whole world. And so how important it is for all of us to properly understand these things, to align ourselves with this source of blessing, and to realize that God is looking at the land of Israel in an entirely different way, because from there flows out the opportunity for all people to, to rise up, to be fulfilled, to stand up and take their place in the, in the fulfillment of human history, and yet to see, with God's help, the beauty and the glory and the, and the uh, redemptive powers that will come to all of humanity through the purity of the land of Israel.